Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be reviewing a Volkswagen Golf R 20th Anniversary Edition. Before we get in this video, I'm gonna give a huge shout out and thank you to the strong Volkswagen here in Salt Lake City, Utah, for giving me some time with this Golf R. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And by the way, this Golf R is available for sale for the time being. If you're interested, if you have any questions, just ask for Alex. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes through a six speed manual transmission. You can also get a dual clutch, but like I said, this one has the manual. Fuel economy is 20 around town and then 28 on the highway with power outputs being 315 horsepower and then 280 pound feet of torque. If you get the dual clutch, the torque is 295 pound feet. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you guys can see it's flat there in the center, and then you've got distinct body lines there on either side. And then popping down below, I've always been a fan of the Golf's headlight design. And notice this has the cool light bar that goes across. And you also have some blue accenting as part of the 20th anniversary package. And you got the blue R there off to the side as well. And then also everything's blacked out here at the bottom. And putting it all together, I really am a big fan of the new Golf R's styling. Again, it's subtle like always, but it looks good too. Tire and wheel setup is 235, 35, 19 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see with the wheels, they're completely blacked out. And then you've got the blue brake caliper, which is another cool part of it. We've got the R logo here on the side. Then you guys can see blue with the mirror cap, another part of the 20th anniversary package. And then I like this here on the side. That looks cool. And then here is the side profile on the Golf R. Again, the design is so sleek. I love it. So here's a quick look at our key fob. We have our unlock and lock function, the opening for the trunk as well as the Volkswagen logo there on the back. Opening the trunk with the Golf R is so cool. So you've got the logo here that you flip and that's how you open up the hatch area. Now you guys can see we've got quite a bit of storage space. That's one of the cool things about hot hatches like the Golf R. We also have a cargo cover built in from the factory. Pretty sharp looking taillights. Of course, we got an R badge here on the back. Parking sensors at the bottom and then look how aggressive the exhaust tips are. So wrapping things up, let me know your thoughts here on the new Golf R. Now popping into the rear, it's soft touch here at the bottom portion of the door panel and I like the look of the window control. I know random, also the handle looks cool too. Now here are the seats, you guys can see blue on the side and then you've got the carbon fiber print there on the outside of the seat. Now, although this is a small car, legroom back here is actually pretty good. Got a little storage pocket, some vents here in the back, heated seats. Really comfortable seats, by the way, here in the back. And then last but not least, headroom's good. 20. Now, taking a look at the front door panel, soft touch here at the very top. Then it's going to be hard to see because of the lighting, but you got some carbon fiber trim down below and then some more padding. All of our window controls right here with our mirror adjustments. And then you guys can see the mirrors as well. Now, I love the front seats in the Golf R. You can see the R logo here. Again, carbon fiber print on the sides, perforated all down the center portion. They are power adjustable. You also got memory seat function. And then you can see our three pedal layout because this one's a manual. Light controls off to the side and then look at that carbon fiber print. Now, taking a look at the steering wheel, you guys can see perforated on either side and then soft touch here at the top and at the bottom. And look at the blue here with the R logo and then we've got a bunch of practical controls on the steering wheel as you can see including the cruise control here on the other side and you got a little r mode right there that's for your race mode pretty cool it's always easily accessible there now in the center gauge cluster you guys can see that we've got a bunch of different performance information showing but we can change how the gauge cluster looks this is one of the cool things about digital gauge clusters is depending on what you want to see you can change and this is obviously you know very similar to audi's virtual cockpit a lot has been taken from that. That's so fun. Sorry, I'm just going through all the animations so you guys can see the different ones. Now, sorry about the glare here, but we do have a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn off the steering wheel in reverse, got parking sensors, all that fun stuff. Now, as for the rest of the infotainment system, this is obviously Volkswagen's slightly controversial unit. I will say after reviewing more cars with this infotainment system, I actually don't mind it. It's super easy to use. Response time is great. And yeah, I understand people complain about the sliders down below with the climate controls and with the volume, but it's, it's honestly easy to use overall, so. I'll give the infotainment system a pass. Soft touch here on the dash, and then you guys can see the carbon fiber 
down below. And then we've got a bunch of shortcut buttons here for the infotainment system, including the drive mode select. You guys already saw the race mode. We also have like a sport mode here. And notice when you open up race, you've got the drift mode and you've got your Nürburgring mode as well. So it's cool that you have all of that. Wireless phone charging pad down below. And then we have our shifter for the six speed manual transmission. Our reverse lockouts push down and over and up. And then we've got a parking brake here. We've got some cup holder action. And yes, it's got the pop out over engineered cup holder life. And then yeah, pretty normal center console. Got some nice blue stitching there and some padding. And then while we're on the topic of storage, there's the glove box. So here's our one sticker for this 20th anniversary edition. Um, again, six speed manual. Um, almost everything standard equipment. You do have some options like the auto dimming rear view mirror apparently and destination. Anyways, 47,000 is the total MSRP on this particular one. And let's see how it drives. Well, it's sucked by visibility before you set off. Here's your visibility of the hood and hopefully you can now see the heads up display. Both of the mirrors throw the rest of the rear. Well, as I was saying, manual Golf R away. This will be exciting. 20th anniversary. I've had a lot of people tell me that this is the one that they uh, purchased in terms of the Golf R's just because of the cool looks. It's always so hard to get out of this driveway. There we go. It just, there's a lip there. So if you don't go at just the right angle, uh, this, you know, it'd be hard to scrape because it's not super low to the ground, but it's still possible. Um, but anyways, they told me they bought this one because a lot of people like the uh, the blue accenting and also the idea of owning a special edition car is pretty exciting. Now I will say, I actually really like the clutch in the Golf R. And, you know, the shifter itself, that's, I think that's the part of this car that kind of feels weird with the manual. I have, I have had a chance to drive the DSG and the DSG in this car is fantastic. It is such a good transmission and the manual in this is not bad, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not super communicative with the shifter. Again, it's not bad, but it, I don't know. It just, um, I think, I think a big part is the weight. Like they did a good job with the feel into the gates, but the shifter head is so light. It needs to have more weight to it. So you feel like you're doing something more substantial when you're changing the gears. Um, but obviously I guess you could change the shifter head yourself. Now in terms of drive modes, the one that I always like to be in is the Nürburgring mode because that is the mode that makes it so everything's basically on the sport side of things but then the suspension set to soft because the Nürburgring is a very bumpy uh, racetrack. Now some other stuff, seat comfort's really good. Um, I do like the perforated texture of the seats and the, the carbon fiber print on the sides actually, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool touch if I do say so myself. I will say the suspension in this is very comfortable for a hot hatch. <laughs> Got cool turbo noises. I mean, this is a, this is a quick car. It's got a it's got a quick feel to it. Steering's really good with the Golf R as well. And I know this isn't like the best handling test on the planet, but <laughs> it's fun. It's got a fun feel to it. Uh, the steering's got like a good amount of weighted feel to it. It's direct as well. They've just done a really good job with this car, um, it, making it super daily drivable, but then also adding a fun aspect of it. So to sum things up, um, I, I love I love the looks of this. I love the interior. I, I think that they've done a really good job on this, and it's cool that it has an amazing automatic. I actually think the shifter's fine. The manual transmission rather is fine. I just think the shifter head needs to. They need to go back to the drawing board on that and just basically build something out that has a nice weighted feel. Again, just, just go and buy an Integra Type S from Acura, right? Those aren't those aren't gonna be terribly hard to get at this point. Go buy one of those and then just like kind of mimic what they've done with the shifter head on that. Um, outside of that, such, such a good car and it's definitely the most balanced hot hatch in terms of the daily drivability with the sportiness.